everyone, and welcome to the vlog. Uh, just in case you missed it, uh, this is the second in the series of my tips and tricks videos for Disney. This one's covering the dining plan. If you didn't see the last one, I'll link it up here or down below. I'll link it. So you picked your resort. Now, should you pick the dining plan? My short answer, yes, you should. My first tip is to book your hotel at least six months out. Why? Because of advanced dining. Disney gives their resort guests six months prior to your arrival to book your dining reservations. Why is this important? Well, if you're choosing the Disney dining plan or the deluxe dining plan and you want specific dining options, um, like for example, Be Our Guest or Cinderella's Royal Table, you need to book those six months out because if you wait too long, they will guaranteed 100% be booked up. So let's cover the basics before we go too deep. Kids under three do not get the dining plan, and it wouldn't make sense for them anyway to get the dining plan because they wouldn't eat enough food to make the dining plan financially worth it for them. So at buffets, they'll eat off the buffet. At a quick service or table service restaurant, they'll share with you. If, say, your example of dinner for the day is one salad with some chicken in it, and the rest of the day you're eating snacks like nuts or fruit, this is not a good option for you. Please do not book it. So with each plan, you'll get certain credits for quick service, snacks, table service. All the credits that you get with the dining plan are on a per person, per night basis. So if you're staying five nights and there's a party of four people, take the number of hotel nights times the number of credits that you have for each dining option. There's three levels of Disney dining plans. There's the quick service, there's the Disney dining, and then there's the deluxe dining. Let's look at the quick service. When I say quick service, think fast food, think walk up, think Chick-fil-A, think McDonald's. That's what Disney considers as quick service restaurants. With this plan, you get two quick service credits per person per hotel night. And you also get two snacks per person per hotel night and one refillable mug. So for example, if there's four people in your party times two credits per person, that's eight credits times five days. That's 40 total credits that you'll have for these quick service restaurants during your stay. One thing to note too, two snack credits can equal one quick service restaurant or two quick service can equal one table service. And table service is sit down restaurants, think, Applebee's or it could be a buffet or a character buffet. So that's a good way if you don't if you want to use your two credits for one table service and then just pay for the rest of your meals of the day, that's fine too. Or you get those two snack credits and two snack credits can be used as one quick service. So instead of getting that bottle of pop, maybe you go take it to Cosmic Rays and get a hamburger. The refillable mug that you get with this is a great value too. You can get coffee with it, you can get soft drinks with it. It's an amazing value. However, you cannot use these refillable mugs in the park. It is for your resort only. Now Disney Dining is the next level up and it adds table service credits. You'll get one table service credit per person per night and one quick service per person per night, two snack credits per person per night, and one refillable bug. This is my preferred dining plan because we book a lot of table service and character dining, so this definitely more than covers it. The Disney Deluxe Dining does not lump anything into table service or quick service. You just get three credits to use per day, per person, per hotel night. You also get two snacks per person per day, per hotel night, and one refillable mug to be used at your resort. Why would you choose this one? I wouldn't suggest this plan to everyone, but if you want to eat at the signature restaurants like say Cinderella's Royal Table or Morimoto Asia in downtown Disney, this is a great option for you. Or if you're a big eater and you want to eat three full meals a day, which I don't recommend in the hot summer sun of Florida, but it's personal preference type of thing. Now, kids 10 and under must eat off of the kids menu at table service restaurants, but at quick service restaurants, there is no restrictions. Kids can order off the adult menu. So for example, if your kid wants to get the shrimp platter off the adult menu at Columbia Harbor House, it's perfectly fine. They can do that. There's no age restrictions at quick service restaurants. Now that being said, here's a quick trick you can use if you want to bank a quick service credit per meal. Have your kids order the adult size of the chicken tenders or the adult size of the shrimp platter and split it. You'll have to buy one of them a drink, but you'll save one quick service credit per meal. And if you're on the quick service plan, that's two meals per day that you saved. You just saved 10 credits. Now remember when I said two 
two quick service equals one table service, that would more than pay for your entire party to go to Chef Mickey's at the end of your vacation. So just a cool little tip there. You can always bank these things. You don't have to use them every day. You can split the meals. And along the same lines of banking, two snack credits equals one quick service. So if you don't want to use your snack credits on snacks, you can use those two snack credits per day for an additional quick service meal. So is it worth it? Let's just use my family as an example here. Last time we went, we did a seven night package. We chose the Disney dining plan. We paid about $1,300 for this dining plan. Now, quick disclaimer here, this is my experience from my last trip. Yours can be completely different based on the number of nights that you stay and the number of people in your party. So the average we paid for a table service restaurant was around 125. I mean, it got as high as 175 a few times. So, you know, there is a range here. But just for simplicity's sake, we're using 125 as our cost minus tip because we're not throwing tip in here on the dining plan because your tip is not included on the dining plan. So for seven days, we spent $875 at table service restaurants. Now move on to the quick service restaurants. The average we spent at a quick service restaurant was $50 for our entire party. So 50 times the seven days was $350. Now that with our table service, we're already up to like $1,225. And we only paid $1,300 for this, remember. Now the snacks, we're just gonna assume that you're not gonna buy bottled beverages and you're gonna get one of the more expensive things like the Mickey Rice Krispie Treats or the bag snacks at your resort. That's gonna be about an average of $5 per snack. Two credits per day per person that's forty dollars a day we're spending on snacks times seven days is 280 dollars which brings our total for table service quick service and snacks to just over fifteen hundred dollars so already just with these three categories we've saved approximately two hundred dollars the refillable mugs in and of themselves are fifteen dollars a piece so for the four of us it would have cost us sixty dollars to buy the four refillable mugs so let's just assume three drinks a day for the four of us for the length of our stay. The average cost of a fountain soda would be $2.50. So that would have been an out of cost charge of $210. That takes our total to $1,775 that we have spent on table service, quick service, snacks, and drinks. With the plan, we ended up saving approximately $475, which is exactly why the Disney dining plan is worth it. You can do the math for yourself to break it out for the other dining plans. One last thing before I go, with this dining plan, we decided to make a last minute change one day, and I didn't realize there was a $10 per person same day change fee. So that means it would have cost $40 to change our dining reservations because we decided to be spontaneous one day and go to a different park. <laughs> now, Disney was nice enough to waive this fee for us, but just be aware, same day changes, $10 per person, it's kind of stinks. All right, everyone, well, if you have any specific questions, ask below. My next video will be about the Fast Passes, my Disney Experience app, and the Magic Band system. But watch out for that one. Thanks for watching. Peace and love.